Nearly all the after effects we experience from electrology are completely normal. This reaction is redness and swelling, and sometimes minimal pain and heat. But this is not a bad thing, because without this process, your skin would not heal. Yes, inflammation is the healing process itself. In this first video, I describe the main players in the healing process. This is a simplification, cartoon version, if you will. For more detail, go to the internet and research any of the cells or processes I'm describing. But mostly I want you to see the incredible interaction of cells. Video 2 will show how these cells collaborate to heal the skin. Mast cells have the lead role in the inflammation process. Located throughout the dermis, these egg-shaped cells are found near small blood vessels. In all the following illustrations, I've colored the mast cells green. Of course, they aren't really green, but largely transparent in color. Within the mast cell, there are tiny globules called granules. I've painted these blue and red. When the injured skin signals the mast cell, these granules open and release chemicals that start up the entire healing process. Here's another illustration of the mast cell. Notice the granules located on the outer edge of the cell. The term degranulation means the granules in the mast cells release chemical mediators. These chemicals are called mediators because they set off or mediate the entire healing process. I've listed some of these chemicals only to illustrate the mast cell's complexity. For example, some chemicals restrict blood flow, while others increase blood flow. Although antagonists, these reactions take place at just the right time. Please don't worry about memorizing these words. We're mostly interested in the process and, most importantly, the visual signs of electrolysis healing that are completely normal and even desirable. Actually, it takes very little skin damage to set off the mast cells and the healing process. Even minor irritation to the skin can cause a release of mediators from the epidermis that cause mast cells to then release their own mediators, a virtual chemical cocktail. In this drawing, notice the mast cell breaking apart and releasing mediators into the skin. Histamine is one of the main chemicals released by the mast cells. We're all familiar with the histamine reaction and usually think it's a bad thing, but were it not for this substance, your skin would not heal. When a mosquito bites you, it's not some venom from the insect that causes the bump, but it's your body's own histamine reaction that causes this. Of course, there are unwanted histamine reactions, such as hives from an allergy, but these reactions can be alleviated with medication. This first reaction from the electrology wound takes place within seconds. In this drawing, you have just treated a follicle. The injured skin cells instantly send chemical messages to the mast cells, those little green guys. The mast cells then degranulate and flood the skin with all kinds of chemical mediators. Histamine quickly reacts on the surrounding blood vessels. The tiny blood vessels increase in diameter and start carrying more blood to the area. Look at the bottom of the illustration. This is a normal blood vessel. Now notice the dilated blood vessel in the magnifying glass. This is how a blood vessel reacts to histamine. The blood vessel carries more blood and consequently the vessel wall is stretched. In this way, the vessel becomes permeable. So now erythrocytes, leukocytes, plasma, and other blood factors leak out into the wounded area. Of course, the normal reaction to this is seen as redness and swelling. The term erythrocyte sounds so impressive, doesn't it? But the term erythrocyte is just Greek for red cell, and that's all. The term leukocyte also sounds so medical and impressive. However, the term leukocyte is simply the Greek word for white cell, and that's all. I suppose you could use the Greek terms to sound impressive, but the terms white cell and red cell are perfectly fine. 
Here's a photo of red blood cells. They kind of look like little donuts, don't they? These cells carry oxygen to all the cells in your body. Indeed, red cells leak out into the wound along with plasma and white cells. But they're not major players in this condition. Red cells primarily function within the blood vessels. If a visible scab forms from electrology, sometimes the crust can have a reddish appearance, and this is because of the dead red cells that form within the crust. By the way, you get a crust from every treated follicle. It's just that in most cases, the crust is so small you can't see it, but it is there. Here's a photo of red and white blood cells in the blood. As you can see, there are many different types of white cells, and each one has a specific function. All these white cells are part of your immune system. They all fight off infections. In wound healing, the neutrophils and monocytes, and they're both white cells, play a major role. Here's an amazing film of a neutrophil, a white blood cell, chasing down and devouring a bacterium. These little monsters are aggressive and move around much like amoeba, which are single-celled animals. In wound healing, neutrophils slither out from the stretched and permeable capillaries to enter the wound site, and they gobble up bacteria and dead tissues. These cells initiate the entire cleanup job at the wound site. 